Electricity. A word most of us take for granted. If you live in a house, what do you do? You flick a switch, the lights come on. If you're on a boat, you have to think about where that electricity comes from. Unless you're in a marina hooked up to shoreline, you have to generate all your own electricity on the boat. When I purchased this boat, I knew that I would need to upgrade some of the electrics on the boat. The inverter was a mere 250 watt inverter, which on a good day, you may get 100 watts out of. I know that because when I would hook up my laptop to it, this being the only socket that came from it, my laptop draws 99 watts when plugged in, charging and in use. It's just charging, it's 57 watts. But at 99 watts, the inverter would start bleeping and crying out that it was being overloaded. So I don't think it was a 250 watt inverter by any stretch of the imagination. This of course had to be upgraded and this was one of the first things I wanted done. It took a while though, as always, I live on a boat. But I have changed it out now to a 2000 watt inverter continuous power, 4000 watt peak, which will run most products I have on the boat. It will run just about everything actually I have on the boat. And upgraded from the one double socket I think I have seven or eight double sockets now on the boat. With some of them having USB sockets within them as well. I'll show you those in a moment. So that was part one of the electrics upgrade. Part two was generating it. I lived on the boat for a couple of months or over two months before I got my solar panels installed. Actually, it was probably nearer to three months. I spent 10 weeks not moving in lockdown, having to run the engine for two hours in the morning and two hours in the evening, every day. And occasionally, if I was editing videos, it would need at least another hour charge in the middle of the day this using probably at least five liters of diesel a day going nowhere since i've had the solar panels fitted which once again are quite controversial to some people's way of thinking i did a lot of research before purchasing them I actually went for the flexi flat panels which glue on the roof. Now, I kept getting told, oh, they overheat, they don't last very long, they're useless, blah de blah de blah de blah. Normally, by people that had the solid panels on the frames would tell me this. Anyway, I did the research and the ones I purchased are actually designed for going on boats, RVs, caravans, or basically anything with a hot tin roof. Perfect for a boat. They don't require an insulating panel between the roof and the panel. They can be glued straight on. They have a special white back into them which helps to decrease the heat. And also they're designed for operating temperatures between negative 20 degrees Celsius, that's minus 20 Celsius, to plus 80. And on the controller, it tells you how hot they are. 
or three days ago on the hottest day we've had this year by far temperatures were well in the 30s inside the boat the maximum temperature those panels reached were 42 degrees celsius so well 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 within their operating temperature the other thing i was told was oh you can't adjust them that you can't tilt them well these panels actually have slightly offset all the panels on them if you look at them closely they're all slightly different so they can actually pick up sunlight from almost every direction and even the tilting ones are fine as long as the sun's coming up on either side of your boat because most of them don't tilt forward or backwards and these also have an efficiency of 22 to 24 percent where a lot of the older ones are 18 19 percent efficiency max from the two 150 watt panels i have on a nice sunny day they bring in around about 11 to 11.5 amps which is well more than enough to charge my batteries run the refrigerator and everything else on my boat i haven't had to start the engine since i've had them installed to generate electricity i only start the engine now to move the boat what it was designed for anyway let's get on into the video and show you what i've been doing and what i've done Here we have my new inverter. It's a 2000 watts continuous, peaking at 4000 watts. Obviously, you never want to push it that hard. And it's got a two power outlet. So, one would do the port side, and one would do the star port side on a ring circuit for each side. I've purchased two types of double socket. One being a double socket with double USB ports, and the other being a double socket just plain. They are all slim fitting sockets. They are all in this brushed stainless steel, which I think will look rather nice on the boat. I now have the power sockets throughout the boat, starting from the bow or the pointy end. I have just inside the door a double socket with USB. I intend to take these bunks out that are in here and turn this into a sitting area. So I might well hang the TV on this end wall. Coming through into the bedroom stroke dinette area, I have also a double socket on the wall with twin USB connectors where I normally keep the TV. The TV I can turn around and view from either direction. From there, you got into the kitchen. I'm staying on the uh, starport side of the boat. I have a double socket there by the uh, cooker. And then go on through into the back cabin, which I intend to turn into my office. I first have a double socket with double USBs, where the computer and charging for the various batteries for my cameras etc will be sitting and then i have a plain double socket to the right of that at the other end of the cabin where i hope to one day get a printer and have a printer there and obviously a spare place for charging again coming down the other way on the other side of the back cabin, I have a plain double socket. This double socket, I intend to have a washing machine linked up to at some time. And when we come past the bathroom and into the port side of the kitchen, I have another double socket. This one I use for using things like the food processor and spice grinder. And that's the new power outlets I have placed in the boat.
methylated spirits has been used to clean down any joints that were making. Here we have the gland where the cables come through into the boat from the solar panels. This is being stuck down with tiger sealant. Use some masking tape. We've masked out the area where the solar panels are going to go. Tiger seal was then put down and now the panels have been gently placed on top of the tiger seal. The fitter is now gently pressing down the edge of the panel all the way around so a perfect seal is made. Now the gland is all glued down and set. You can see the cables going in through the roof here. They're going directly now into the electrics cupboard at the back of the boat. I chose to run the cables on the outside of the boat to the back as logistically it was very difficult to remove all the panels inside the boat to run them inside. So I just ran them down the handrail. I don't think it looks too bad. And with the very low profile panels, there is very little to be seen. They come into the cupboard up here behind those blue cables behind the box there you can probably just see and then come through through here and into the controller and of course then there's the other two going out down here through the bulkhead to the batteries and then for the inverter, you see the cables coming in from the batteries, coming up here, up through here, in here, and go on to the back of the inverter. The blue one's out, it's got two circuits, so I have a ring main running down the port and the starport side of the boat. Go back in here the same way. You come back in up there into that terminal block into this breaker box, and then the cables run down here. One goes off down the port side of the boat, the other one down the starport side of the boat. My 220 volt. We can see here the amount of ampage that the solar panels are bringing into the boat. This is 7 a.m. in the morning, and it's not a particularly sunny morning. It's fairly overcast, but we're still bringing in enough to charge the batteries. I hope you have enjoyed that, how I'm now harnessing the sun's power for free. Well, not quite free, of course. I did have to purchase the solar panels, and the controllers, etc. I've calculated that they will pay for themselves within a year for the diesel I won't be using just to charge the batteries when not moving the boat. I thank you all for watching. I thank my Patreons and all the subscribers. I'm heading very close now towards that 1000 mark, which will be a great milestone. That just leaves me to say thank you very much for watching. Trevor Wright.